to the parents' story, incidentally, uh, before we go a little further, how many people saw the Becky Bell situation on 60 Minutes? Fair number? Okay. The Becky Bell story, as told by the parents, and as uh, it was done on 60 Minutes, claims that Becky sought out her illegal back alley abortion butcher on the Saturday, six days before the Friday on which she died. And the parents, depending upon which story you uh, read, because there are several stories now floating around as they, uh, you know, once, once you begin to tell a lie, you have to keep uh, changing it all the time when some new facts come up. She allegedly used a subterfuge of the parents, going to go to a party. Then later on, when they found out that there really had been a party, but not quite the kind of party the parents like to talk about, a party uh, incidentally full of drugs, and illicit sex, and so forth, and um, some of that is on the uh, coroner's report, by the way. The parents like to talk about the coroner's report. They never show it to anybody. That's right on the front page of the coroner's report. It indicates the kind of party that Becky had been at. LSD, speed, cocaine, uh, names of people that she had, had uh, been with, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So while I talk all the time about the coroner's report, they only show the front page of the autopsy report. Uh, both reports, by the way, indicate that she allegedly died from the same uh, cause, septic abortion with pneumonia. That's a little uh, line on the report, but when you open up the report, look inside, there's not the slightest bit of evidence for anything other than the fact that this girl died of streptococcus pneumonia, a very severe uh, 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 infection from it, the exact same uh, brand of pneumonia that within hours felled and killed the famed puppeteer, muppeteer Jim Henson, who previously had been in excellent health and uh, came down sick, did not treat it, and was dead within 24 hours. Becky apparently was suffering from her pneumonia for over five or six days, days on which, uh, on at least two occasions, her temperature reached 103 degrees or more, yet the parents did nothing, never took her to a doctor. Now, the business about going to a party, if you recall the 60 Minutes uh, piece, uh, and I'll read from a transcript of it, a little bit here. This is Maurice Safer now talking. As you recall, Maurice Safer was the fellow who uh, uh, was the um, uh, person who uh, handled that, that uh, segment of 60 Minutes. And Maurice Safer says, her parents say that in desperation, Becky turned to some back alley abortionists. They, have, they believe it happened on a Friday. Becky said she was going to a party. Karen Bell, the mother now, speaks. And I said, where? Because I watched her like a hawk. She said, well, it's on the south side, and I want to be with a friend that needs some help. She's having a lot of problems. And Becky was always like that. She always tried to help everybody, and I believed her. What a soft-hearted woman this is. You know, I had uh, four uh, daughters myself, five kids all, and um, we didn't have a girl who had all the various problems, which we'll discuss in a second, that Becky did, but I wouldn't believe a cock and bull story like that. I'm going to a party. Where? She'd have got an answer. Where are you going? What part of town? Who are you with? What's the address? What's the phone number? When are you coming home? Okay. Now, a little background regarding this girl, who is being portrayed as the all-American girl. Becky Bell first gave her parents a scare that she was pregnant in February of 1988. She died in September. Her mother took it to Planned Parenthood. The pregnancy test proved to be negative, false alarm. But Becky, at the same time, was also hooked on various drugs. Her parents signed her into a rehab, uh, a drug center, for over two months, from mid-February to mid-April. Within a month of coming out, Becky was back on drugs and back having sex with the same old boyfriend who was already pregnant by the middle of May. Mother watched her like a hawk, always wanted to know where she was and what she was up to. That's what she claims. After uh, 
people brought up the embarrassing um, to the to Mrs. Bell and, and, and uh, uh, the husband uh, autopsy, not the autopsy, the coroner's report with the telltale uh, words in the front there about the LSD and the cocaine and so forth. The story had to change a little bit. So now we got her visiting some allegedly um, uh, upset friend who needs a little help to get through the uh, night from whatever demons are bothering her. And good old Becky is going to help her. And uh, if I sound um, too facetious regarding this or cynical and so on, I, I want to state, first of all, that I do sympathize with the parents. I really do. This girl was one, one heck of a um, problem to uh, contend with. I appreciate that. And I don't want to knock the girl too much either. But this is a cause celebre that is an absolute fraud being perpetrated all over the country. And I just can't let them get away with this kind of stuff. The parents have voluntarily put themselves forward, telling this cock and bull story everywhere, in every, uh, every place they can, under all circumstances. And in fact, that's their, that's their job. They've been doing this for two years, no visible means of support, they have absolutely no income coming in other than what Planned Parenthood and Maliard with now and Eleanor Smeal with the feminist majority pay them to make these ads and make their commercials and make their videotapes and to show up at legislatures all over the country and, uh, who are dealing with parental consent laws and to show up on college campuses to seduce young kids like you into believing that there really had been an illegal abortion and we've got to knock out these parental consent laws and keep our wide open abortion on demand. 